Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome. I think I initially made this stream unlisted accidentally and then set it to public, so I'm gonna just make sure that everything is as it should be. Now this might work. So, hello there, Dragon Ace, Enthusiast, Nick. I sound a little quiet versus the game music. Um, okay, does that make any kind of difference? I'm gonna have to wait a little bit to find out, but let me know, please. Hello there, Catsuth, welcome. Better? Excellent. Thank you, everybody. Hello there, insane buffoon. Hello there, Galleon. And uh, thank you as well. All right. Hello there, Steven. What's up? I think it's time I got started. I'll turn my own TV volume a little bit lower, I think. Hello there, Rich Toto. Welcome. So, Hawaii, don't we begin? Sound like a good time? We are back, everyone, with Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, or Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright, or wherever it goes. September 7th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number one. We're going in, baby. Hello there, Winterburn, welcome to the stream. Let's get going. Who was, who was, who was, who was, Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fey. Yes. The greatest character. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. A guy so cool he got his own game. And then another game that's Japanese only. I'd better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fey, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder, and we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin, then. If we may call our first witness, Your Honor. The prosecution calls the chief officer of the scene, Detective Gumshoe, baby! <laughs> oh, why am I here? Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Oh, by the way, um, I, f I forgot if this was in the chat or if it was on a comment uh, on the video later, but apparently this game is supposed to take place in a sort of, like, alternate universe LA, which actually lines up pretty well with the last game. Remember how the clock ended up being not three hours slow, but nine hours fast? Well, California would be nine hours away from France. That's, that's pretty good. I like it. Sir. My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. Oh, here we go. We're getting Danganronpa... Trial 4? The body was found by this window here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hands, sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue? Yeah, we, we had a whole thing where we established that it's a clock. Floor plans added to the court record. 
Now, detective. N yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fey, who was found at the scene, correct? Yeah, that, that checks out. Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe. Please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Kachung, Maya Fey's arrest. Hello there, Chief Camera Guy. Welcome to the stream. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fey, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fey. Why? We had a witness describing her. Oh, I thought she was talking. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fey at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. The very moment, you say. Very well. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh. <gasps> Hey, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness testimony, <laughs> I'm still getting information from her sister just like as a note. She would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. Oh, wow. This is going to suck. <laughs> the witness always slips up and says something wrong. Well, Detective Gumshoe does have a history of letting things slip. It worked lots of times. Huh. I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. Alright, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. Alright. Okay, so... L1 is press? Oh. That's how I do it. Okay, so I have actual evidence for contradictions and I could just attempt to call bluffs by pressing. I didn't even realize that would immediately do the hold it thing. <laughs> who did you say you got a call from? Hey pal, don't play dumb, you know who. The call was from a customer at the Gatewater Hotel, right across from the crime scene. Hmm, huh, okay, I pressed. Not sure it did much though. Right, please continue. I'm assuming the game will eventually start punishing me for bad presses, because otherwise I could just press every single thing. <laughs> There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fey, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I'll come back. I immediately arrested Fey. We had a witness account describing her. Hmm. The very moment. Even the judge questioned this one. Hold on just one second. Y yeah? If I heard correctly... You said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? Oh, yeah, a witness testimony is not hard evidence. Hard evidence would be like the smoking gun. <laughs> did did I say that? Me? <laughs> He's doing like the side eye, that's great. I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. <laughs> that's great. And I was not pressing X for that, that was just like a, a comical timing thing. Exactly what about the suspicion woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence? W what? Miss May isn't suspicious and she sure isn't Pink, pal. W well, I guess she is Pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um... Hmm... I guess pressing can have its advantages. That wasn't even, I, get, I mean, it wasn't a contradiction within his testimony, but that is fudging on Gumshoe's part, so, uh, alright. Oh, and multiple people in the chat are saying that pressing rarely has ramifications. Okay, fair enough. Yes. Gah. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective, let's hear your testimony again. Alright, hard evidence. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results show that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. 
Oh my god. How do you like that? That's my hard evidence. I probably should have mentioned that first, because it's actual hard evidence. <laughs> hmm. Before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Y your Honor? Why didn't you test- yeah, testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? Uh, eh, I know. I'm really embarrassed I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well, the defense may begin its cross-examination. Jeez, brutal. <laughs> All right, hard evidence. After securing the suspect, uh huh. Yeah, okay. Uh huh. Although I think Maya found that, but that's splitting hairs even for this. The word Maya. Lab test results show the blood was the victim's. Yes. Blood found on the victim's finger. The victim wrote the killer's name. I don't know if I have any real evidence for this. Oh, a department store receipt. Does that matter at all? A memo. Eh, that's splitting hairs, I think. I'll press this, maybe? Just because you found it next to the body doesn't mean the victim wrote it. Ah. Ho ho! Then who did write it, smarty pants? W who? Um. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> this, so this is where I get screwed because I pressed and now I'm caught in a set of options that none of them work. I'll say Miss May, but this is gonna end badly. Well, it could have been the witness, Miss May. Hold on. The witness was in her hotel room, not the office. Try pulling the other leg, Mr. Wright. Ouch. Yeah, and while you're at it, pull mine too, pal! What? <laughs> well, detective, tell us what was written on that memo you found. Okay, back to it. Lab test results. Also blood on the victim's finger. I don't know how I would press this. Yeah, Dragon Ace, I suppose the killer could have written the blood. He, d I mean, I did notice he said there was blood found on the victim's finger, but he didn't say it was the victim's blood. So I guess I will go back to that. I'm gonna ask the same question. The killer? Anyone could see that. Oh. You're saying the killer wrote her own name? Buddy, please. She was framed. Hold on, if that's the case, where's your evidence? Ah... Uh, <clears throat> tisk tisk. Ha! I guess that was a bit of a tall order for you. Those without evidence shouldn't open their mouths, Mr. Wright. Yeah, pal! <laughs> alright, alright. On which hand was the bloody finger, detective? The right hand. Hmm, she was right-handed. Ha <laughs> ha Nice try! Uh-oh. Guess it wasn't too hard to see what I was getting at there. <laughs> this is amazing. The memo? Just because you found it next to the body doesn't mean the victim- Oh, did I- Oh, this is literally the thing I just did. I did! I wrote it! <laughs> it could've been me! What?! So was you! <laughs> No, 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 I'm just saying, it could have been me. <laughs> Can you prove it wasn't? <laughs> Hold on. So you admit to this? You admit that you wrote the note. Uh, listen to me, Mr. Wright. This is a court of law, and I expect you to refrain from making thoughtless statements. It's amazing. Amateur. <clears throat> well, detective, this is great. <laughs> this is so dumb. <laughs> Alright, the word Maya... I guess I'll press it for fun. Do you have proof it was Mia who wrote that? Of course I do, pal! Uh-oh. You sounded pretty confident. This might not be good. Lab test results- okay. 
Yeah. Before she died, maybe that's the thing. Well, it would have to be before she died, I suppose. Oh. Detective Gumshoe, do you get a lot of cases where the victim actually writes the killer's name? Sure, it happens all the time in books and the movies. Oof. This isn't a movie, Detective, it's a game. Oof. Let's talk about reality, shall we? Um, I guess I haven't heard of many cases. No? Don't you find it a little odd that the victim would write down a name? Especially the name of her own sister? Ah, uh, yeah, actually, you got a point, pal. Stop right there. The witness's opinion of the matter is irrelevant. The facts are clear. The victim wrote down the name of the accused. The victim told us the name of her killer. Order! Order! That didn't go so well. Th that's right! What he said! That's his whole testimony. Okay. I mean, I could just press literally everything. I examined the scene with my own eyes, right? And did you find any evidence? Now, now, don't jump the gun on me, pal! Just listen, I'm getting to the good part. I got a bad feeling about this. Okay, then he moves on. The fact that it was written clearly, though. Do you have proof it was me? Oh, no, I already did this. Damn. Actually, yeah, lab test. What kind of tests were these again? Huh? What kind? Uh, well... I hear they take the, uh, little bits in the blood, the, uh, hemo... hemo... hermo... goblins? Hobgob... uh... hermogoblin puffin? <laughs> I refuse to testify in this matter, pal! I'm no expert on blood tests. Yes, that was quite clear. You may continue with your testimony. <laughs> this is great. Thanks, pal. I mean, your honor, sir. Detective Gumshoe. Yeah? I look forward to your next evaluation. As should you. Uh, oh. <laughs> that was a mess. Right! Where was I? <laughs> Jeez. Pull the finger before she died. I gotta present something. Um. The fact that it's a receipt? Oh, yeah, the floor plans, maybe? Eh. Yeah, there's gotta be something I can do with this. The fact that it, like, it's not a memo, I don't know. This feels weak. But I'll try the memo thing. Because it wasn't exactly a memo. Eh. This evidence clearly reveals the contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. How exactly are that evidence in the statement just now related? They aren't, are they? Not at all. Mr. Wright, please think the facts over before making accusations. <laughs> oh no, I took damage! Oh dear. Uh. I can't check this. Huh. This is tough, actually. I'm still bothered by saying blood found in the victim's finger, like not coming from her finger. That that does irritate me. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. Oops. This is irritating. After securing the suspect. I found a memo next to the victim's body. Damn. I don't even know what to do with this. Options, I'm assuming, is just, yeah, save and load. This doesn't really... Eh, it drips a little bit. The murder weapon... Actually, wait a minute, yeah. She wouldn't have used, like, would she have used her own, like, head blood to write the memo? But the fact that it was written clearly, right? The broken remains of a glass light stand. A conversation between the chief and Maya.
Oh, it loops. Time of death, single blunt force trauma, and death was instantaneous! There it is! God damn! Alright. That's- that- that was actually tricky. Objection! Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fey. That's really what you're saying. B what This is one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it, who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. Backwards. The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. Oh, hello there, Mal. Welcome to the stream. This is a report from your department, Detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But. No butting your way out of this one, Detective. God, that guy's huge. Order, order. The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? When? Uh, I do forget. After? It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being... T tisk tisk Yes, I am. <laughs> that autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. W what? A second autopsy was performed yesterday, at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No way! Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to ride Maya. He bows, what a freaking prick. That is all. You're welcome, audience. Oh, hello there, Energar Mad Cat. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, hello there, uh, Wrath Dragon Knight. Welcome as well. I see. Damn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. <laughs> what can I say? I'm the best. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? You're a sham. The detective's sham. I'm a sham! <laughs> I'm gonna do I'm a sham. This is great. Detective Gumshoe. Was I a fool to trust you in your report? Huh? Me? I, I wasn't... Huh? Detective Gumshoe. <clears throat> I'm disappointed in you, handing him the wrong report like that. Eh? Uh, I... I'm sorry, sir. You are at fault, Detective. This isn't going to look good on your evaluation next month. Oh no! What? <sighs> your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Uh, understood. The court accepts the evidence. May have looked for a few minutes, still died from a blow by a blunt object. Well, Your Honor? The evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. <laughs> well, I'll take my leave now. Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Let the witness Miss April May take the stand. Hello there, Trickster Fox. Welcome to the stream. Exactly what part of her is innocent. She's still doing the cat thing, it's great. Witness your name, please. April May! At your service! With the the like the cute expression, the wink. Order! An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. <laughs> the witness will refrain from wanton winking. <laughs> Oh, yes, Your Honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was, like, in my hotel room? Tea? 
I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fey and Co. law offices. Hmm, that's right, big, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. Okay. It was, like, 9 o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know? Give me just a second. Hmm. Maybe the time doesn't matter. And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked! The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and... and... she hit her! With her back against the wall like that? Then the woman with the long hair, she kinda... slumped. But she's below the window in that shot. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy wanton wink. This game is freaking embarrassing. This is amazing. Hello there, Falcophon. Welcome to the stream. Hmm. Well, Your Honor? I see. It is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any... Wait, Your Honor! Yes, Mr. Wright? What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite... firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Mia Fey's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. Hey, how dare you! Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yeah, like, worst thing that happens is I back off. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. Damn, the judge almost just completely let that slide. <laughs> Nine o'clock at night. Looked out the window. Woman with long hair being attacked. The woman dodged to one side and ran away. That does bug me. I might press that one, but let me check my evidence as well. Actually... See you tonight at 9. That's fair enough. It was 9 o'clock at night. Okay. Broken glass light stand. Yeah, he outright said I'll get a press. She dodged? Dodged what? Well, the attack. Please continue your testimony. Caught up and she hit her. Yeah. Why did you do that? Huh? Why? Like, why what? Why did you look out the window? Were you expecting to see something? Oh, well, um, gee. What, that's it? She can't get out of this question that easily. I sort of, you know. I had a feeling! Perfect. Well, I have a feeling she's trying to avoid the question. Maybe I should press a little harder on this one. Huh. Go for it. Let's see how far I can run with this. Surely, you must have had a reason to look out your window at that time of night. Also, I know this is like a low-hanging fruit joke, but I, like, I actually think the game might do a Don't Call Me Shirley here. We'll find out. Hello there, Neon Wave. Welcome to the stream. Because I'm opening with Shirley. You must have had, like, I, I actually expect a, a Shirley joke. Let's see what happens. I... ooh. Mr. Wright, her name is April May, not Shirley. I will not have you badgering my witness. Badgering? You insist on needling her with these trivial questions. I really don't think it should be allowed. Yeah, yeah, stop it. Oh, no, the poor girl. Order! 
Mr. Wright, you have been warned. Poor girl. What about poor me? <laughs> you looked out the window. What did you see next? This is amazing. Uh, okay, a woman with long hair being attacked. I'll just hit everything. Boom with long hair. That was Mia Fey? Mm-hmm. Slender? Sort of. Well, some people might say pretty, if that's your thing. Your thing? And the person attacking her? The mousy girl. How do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Well, you know... She had a girlish physique? Women know these things. <laughs> Look, I, I just know, okay? Airtight. There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short, girlish figure. The testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. Miles is so smug. I question the terror... The terrimony? The testimony. The terranigma? <laughs> Hold on a minute, that testimony stinks! It sucks! It's bad! You suck! W what Miss May, I'm willing to bet that... Oh, this is a risky move. You're lying. Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? <laughs> Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what's the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless. About this, I mean. <laughs> okay. If you had really witnessed my client, Maya Fay, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. <clears throat> yeah, her, like, spirit medium clothes. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis, except her. Uh, alright. <laughs> and I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. Alright, let's, let's, uh... However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. It's... it's kaput. It's... Uh... Oh, damn, there's definitely another thing. I don't know, whatever, it's fine. Everything's fine. But... but... Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. Yeah, we do. I mean, I, I met her. <laughs> Oh, for God's sake, Fakafan. If Maya escapes this courtroom, will there be a small medium at large? Hey! She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? More like, may not hold up in court! Rawr! What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I'm not mean, I'm just average. I, I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good... Oh, God. I'll be a good girl, I promise. Jesus. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn. I almost had her. Yeah, that was actually going somewhere. Oh, no, she actually... No, no, we're good. She re is actually doing the testimony. I'm not cross-examining. I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Okay, that's gonna be... I, I already know where we're doing this. Uh... Wait a minute. Yeah, I ran off to the right. I guess it depends on the perspective you're looking for, but if it was at the front door, then to the left, but the glass crashing? Hmm. I get the feeling this is going to come into play. Then the girl in the hippie club <laughs> ran after her, and she hit her with that weapon. I saw it. I did. I'm a witness. I saw it. Ah, uh, yeah, Neon Wave, this is the PS4 version of the game. That that clock, um, the kind of statue-y clock, the thinker, I think? Wait a second. Wait a second, everyone in this courtroom knows it's a clock, but how does she know that? She shouldn't know that. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you, teehee? Oh, I, oh, I'm calling around on the clock thing, because none of us in this room said it was a clock. I see. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. Yeah, I will. Uh, 
Ah, damn it. <laughs> Too quick. Uh, clock. Didn't this come up in another testimony recently? Well, don't look so sour, Mr. Lawyer. You can't win them all. You have amazing eyesight if you knew that it was a clock and that it was a thinker. That's incredible. No, but I have a feeling I'm onto something now. I'm still bothered by the wiretap, but that's probably going to come later. Hmm. Yeah, time to see if the testimony was actually in our own words. That does bug me. Ran off to the right. Is that right as in your right, as you look from the hotel? Um, which hand do I hold my knife in again? Could you pick, like, literally any other object in, in a murder investigation? <laughs> right! It was my right hand, right? Satisfied, Mr. Wright? Please continue. Your Honor, that statement contradicts this evidence. Huh? Oh, no, I blew it. Oh, no, it's glowing, so I don't know if I've lost it yet, but... Yeah, I don't see anything contradictory. Huh? Really? Overruled. No. Alright. Whoopsie doopsie. I was wondering if that would count. Um, the girl in the hippie clothes... She hit her with that weapon. Actually, wait. If she ran off to the right, though, then why would she die slumped up against the wall? That, that clock thing absolutely has to be something with this, though. Like, why does she know it was a clock? Also, the broken remains of the glass light stand. That still bugs me a little bit. Hmm. The murder weapon. Let me see this again. Because all the stuff got knocked over. But she ran to the right. This does bug me. I'll use the statue for the statue talk. Miss May. What you said just now was quite revealing. Okay, so I had the right idea, but... They wanted me to present confirmation of what she said as a contradiction. Revealing? Ooh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Naughty Mr. Lawyer. Oh, he just blows it off. You just said that this statue of the Thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Er. Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock, too. And he was found guilty of murder. Order! Order! Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Ooh, uh. The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. I overrule my own objection. <laughs> objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Whew, that was close. If he stopped me there, the trial would be over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? Th that's... Because I heard it? Yes, I heard it. From across the street. I heard it say the time. So, you've been to the law offices of Fay Co. N no! Hey, I didn't say that! Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room! Hee <laughs> hee! It's a loud goddamn clock. The law offices of Fay Co, where the murder took place, is very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because... She couldn't have heard it. It couldn't have rung. Because it was 9 o'clock, and then she just decided to look out the window? I'll still say she... Well... 
Yeah, she looked out her window at 9 and then saw the murder. Your Honor, members of the court, it is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. Oh, that's right! I forgot about that. It's broken because it was a freaking murder weapon already. I forgot about that. But, no, 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 wait, but or were the batteries dead? No, because the guy whacked it. Uh, I forgot how it worked. Uh. Oh no, it was empty. She was going to fill it with... That's right, it's empty. She was going to fill it with papers. That clock is missing its clockwork. How could you possibly... Just take a look at this. Right now. Oh. See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. I gotta hand it to you. You should have seen his face. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big, fat, oh my god, she's getting the twitchy eye in the mouth, liar. F fat, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was the thing that was going to piss her off. Well, Miss May? Yes, I am. Huh? Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty? Somehow, he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Aw! Oh, well, this is where I could break in my phone conversation. Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Ho ho! Impossible, of course. I have proof. Wh what? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you, now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is... Take Just take a look at this! Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone. Ooh-hoo, you have a girly phone! <laughs> wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Hello there, Koyuki. Welcome to the stream. And hello there, amateur at everything. <laughs> Welcome as well. Order! Order! The defendant's cell phone! Th this wasn't brought to my attention! Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it? <sighs> the good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. Let's hear the conversation. Would you just... Listen to this. We've already read this. You want me to hold on to the thinker? If you could. Uh, the clock isn't talking right now. Oh, that's lame. I have to take the clock work out. September 5th, 927. That's... That's airtight, man. <laughs> Your Honor? I think this makes it clear the clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that weapon was a clock? I, I really hope that as a running trope in this game, every single witness, when thoroughly defeated, foams at the mouth and passes out. Just every time. <laughs> well... Well, isn't it uh, obvious? I saw that clock before! Um, what store was that again? 
I, I go to so many. Yeah, nice try, buddy. It's a custom-made clock. Oops, I forgot. Wink. So, the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Oh, I do. That objection, or that testimony stinks. Because this clock is from butts! The witness claims she had seen it before, but this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen the clock before. The clock itself is made by Larry Butts. It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world, and the one that isn't here is in police custody. I impossible! Everything is sold in stores! You can't buy friendship, Miss May! It's too valuable for money. Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. <laughs> nice! <laughs> what a slick move. <laughs> oh? Excuse is not on sale today? Jeez, Phoenix! <laughs> Ooh. Oh. <laughs> is she gonna, like, DBZ power up? Oh my god, what? Her heart was upside down? And she got the evil face? What's it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die! Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We don't need to go all the way to June. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Silly me. <clears throat> Did I, um, like, lose it? I guess I did. Tee -hee. Scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Wow. <laughs> hmm. Oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, your honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... I'm gonna go with you had heard about it, because she was probably prompted by Miles Edgeworth. The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof! Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence proving that the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. Huh. Aho! That's right, the wiretap! I almost forgot! Have a look at this. Something I stole, which calls into question this whole proceeding. Uh, ooh, that! <laughs> That's just an AC adapter, so I can play my Sega Genesis. I found this in Miss May's room. I'm just going out and saying it? Wow. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were tapping the victim, Miss Mia Fey's phone, were you not? Ooh. Ooh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. Oh, damn. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> it troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that were the case, which it's not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is... Hang on one second. Yeah, this is just the same conversation. They very explicitly say it. I was wondering if this would be some kind of trick, but like... It's just, I've already done this. I guess it was for the purpose of proving that the clock wasn't working. I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. 
Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. It's a clock. It looks like the thinker. It tells you the time. You used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I... I... Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, this is not uh, uh, Look at the witness's face! Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. <laughs> witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May. Shut up! All of you! What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You... You lawyer! Jesus, it's terrifying. It, it, it's no fair, all of you ganging up on me like that. Oh, so I'm the bad girl, is that it? Is that it? Uh, uh, <laughs> nice, nice deflection. <laughs> that did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. Huh. I don't know if she did it. Why the wiretap? Why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't tippity tap <laughs> Ir irrelevant? <laughs> this is excruciating. <laughs> Gosh, she's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone? Huh, I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking, I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Oh my god, it's Joseph Joestar. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, she's good. The next thing you're gonna say is, I'd like to see her pull that off. Ugh. Well, you're not the first man who's thought that- Oh, wow. Clever. And of course, I can and will. You can't be serious. No way. Way, I say. Way. Oh, and I assure you, I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. <laughs> okay, so, the killing happened around 9 o'clock at night. Why, that's just when I was getting room service from that sweet bellboy. R room service? Ice coffee, I believe it was. Ice coffee, you know, like normal coffee, but cold. If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts and then you have regular cold coffee. Uh, ice coffee? Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy! Ergo, the witness was not on the scene at the time of the murder. <laughs> so, where does that leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Fey, commit murder. No, they're gonna let her just walk away. There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well... Come on, think of something. Call the bellboy. <clears throat> the defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunk in quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. <clears throat> However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to con calling this witness. Condition? If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. Well, yeah, but she was conspiring with the killer. That's why she's wiretapping. Like... There's no point in wiretapping so she can teleport over there and kill her. Like, she saw the murder. We know she was in her room. She conspired with the killer. She's not the actual killer. 
and thereby, uh, not to mention the killer was Mr. Pink Man, we all saw it, and thereby you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Fay. That is my condition. What? I'd better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Except, give up. I'll just give up. Alright, I got nothing to lose, except for, well, everything. Understood. I accept your condition. Huh. <laughs> Fool. You fell right into my trap. Uh-oh. Uh, um, wait. Very well. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand, who has no name, I guess. Well, no, he's gonna announce it when he gets here. I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. <laughs> he still has stuff to serve to people? This is great! <laughs> yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. That tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. This is amazing. <laughs> Oh, fuck, I found the courtroom's a circus. I forgot what game it is, but there's one trial where there's literally a clown. So, Miss May's room service. And there's also that meme from, um, Phoenix Wright, where Miles, I forgot who he's saying it to, but he's something like, You're not a clown. You're the entire circus. It's like the greatest line ever. I am the head bellboy at the Fine Gatewater Hotel, in business for four generations. I still don't have a name. I believe I received a call after 8 o'clock in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee he, to be brought to her at 9 o'clock on the dot, sir. So she decided to look out her window while she was receiving her coffee? I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course. And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May, herself. I see. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Right. I'm ready. I hope. This is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now, Maya will be finished. I'm gonna press him for precisely nine, but I also want to just double check my, uh, my stuff. That doesn't help me very much. The phone says something at 9. See you tonight at 9. So yeah, the actual meeting occurred while Miss May was getting her coffee. Precisely 9 o'clock then? Precisely, exactly, and most definitely, sir. 9 o'clock p.m. How can you be so sure? Oh, I heard the clock! Oh, oh! <laughs> Miss May was quite insistent that it be brought then. Oh, bellboy, tee hee, I'd like, like, iced coffee at exactly nine o'clock. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on her door at the crack of nine, sir. Oh, I could still pop in even now? Oh, no, I can't. <laughs> Why would she be so particular about the time? Yeah. And I delivered it. Like, I, I know that if she was receiving the coffee, she wouldn't have been able to see the window. So, like, but I can't question May herself about that. Eh, uh, so... Nine o'clock on the dot, you say? Yes, I confirmed that detail several times. She was watching a program on the TV and wished to drink after she finished, sir. Nine o'clock, the time of the murder. I know there's something I can do with this. Are you sure it was Miss May on the phone when you received that call at 8 o'clock for, uh, for coffee? Absolutely, sir. How can you be so certain? I checked Miss May in personally, sir. Not only did I see her in all of her stunning radiance, but I also heard her voice. And then I saw them, and I... <clears throat> the point being, I remembered her quite well, sir. Yes, what then? Okay. Uh, whatever. Um, I know there's something I gotta do with this here. I delivered it to her herself. I don't think there's anything I could press with this, but I'll do it anyway. 
You are sure it was Miss April May herself? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir. It's an endearing mannerism of mine. <laughs> he himself describes it as endearing. This is amazing. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the room service, sir, she, the guest, sir, favored me with a, a um, an embrasser, sir. Embrasser? Is that French for embrace? It's French for kiss, sir, but not a French kiss, sir, more of a peck on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor, sir. <laughs> this is the best. Hello there, Backward Reflect. Welcome to the stream. It was a moment I shall never, ever forget, sir. Sounds pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. Yeah. It's no good. There's nothing there. Oh, so I actually had to press everything. Is is that it? This is gold, though. <laughs> Finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. Hmm, it was a bit tedious. <laughs> the witness may leave the stand. I can't let this happen, can I? W wait! Please wait! Yes, does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Your Honor, I must object. This charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright. I'll give you one more question, that's all. Okay. This is really it now. This is my last chance. What do I ask him about? Bed making, check-in... This is tough. I'm between check-in and room service. Oh, man. Uh... Damn. I'm going to say check-in, but I get the feeling this is going to bite me. T tell me about check-in. Tell me about when you checked in Miss May. Ah, that's not going to matter. Oh, all right. Very well, sir. My first thought was that she was a beautiful, beautiful person. She's just my type of girl, so it was a disappointment, really. I see. Oh, uh, excuse me. What exactly was a disappointment? Well, I am not without charm, sir, but... Even I'd have little chance with her lover there. Oh ho! <clears throat> there we go. Uh? What did he say? What did you say? Uh, oh, uh, rather, quite. Bellboy, tell us the... T uh, he doesn't have a name. This is amazing. Tell us the truth now. Did Miss May check in with another person? I object. That was... Objectionable. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, sir, you were... you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Uh, yes, quite. Indeed. It was the, er, uh, good barrister there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... Huh? He asked me not to mention it if I wasn't specifically asked, sir. Oh my god! Throw him right under the bus, damn! Ugh. You, you fool! Bellboy's honest to a fault, baby. I've done it! I've won! Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man, correct? Yes, sir. Then, when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room? That's right, sir. Hmm. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright, who is this other person? Simple. It was the man with Miss May. The man who checked in with Miss May. Ugh. Your Honor, 
As has been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone. Yet, Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder! My, what a convenient little setup. But it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from this court. Gah. Upstart! Amateur! These accusations are ludicrous! Enough. The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. That is all today for the trial of Maya Fey. Court is adjourned. Whew! I passed without dying. What a badass. This is great. September 7th, 224, the defendant lobby number one. Mr. Wright, you are amazing in there. R really? I think I might be your newest fan. Oh, I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> then again, that other attorney was pretty cool too. Huh? And that face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips, sent shivers up my spine. Well, maybe that wasn't it, though. Maybe he was just a spooky, scary skeleton. <clears throat> hmm, if you say so. So, what happens to me? Do I get to go home now? Uh, well... No, I don't think so. Not yet. Oh. I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial! A lead? That man with Miss May. He's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? By the way, I, I should mention, I hope the game doesn't just outright spoil who the killer is, and then have me asking Miss May questions knowing in advance that she's not the murderer, but who could possibly be. Like, I wonder if there's ever actually going to be a whodunit in this game. I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway. Oh, anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm going to find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis. Don't worry. I'll find him by tomorrow, I promise. I'm counting on you. Alright. I asked for a full record of April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. Yeah, ran to the right. That still is bothering me. Oh, catch it. There are whodunits. Okay, nice. Thank you. I don't know how much good this will do me at all now, except that it oddly specifies a direction. So, of course, it's going to come in handy when we look at the room and see that she ran to the left, or there was no running, or whatever, and she slumped against the wall. Anyway, time to hit the pavement to do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in that detention center, and it's up to me to set her free. Alright. To be continued. Freaking great. This is awesome. I'm going to see if I can't work my way up to the point where we get to the next trial, then I'll end the stream. Save your progress. It just prompts me. Hell yeah. Alright. September 7th, 311. Visitor's room. <clears throat> Well, hello! I didn't expect anyone to visit me in such a dank place as this. It's really quite... moving. Not! You stinking lawyer! I hope you die! Have you come to laugh? Yes, laugh at the fall of Miss May! No, not really. There's something I wanted to ask. Unfortunately, there is nothing I want to be asked. Haven't you done enough questioning, you... Spiky head! <laughs> oh, got him. Here we go again. She's got the twitchy eye. Please, you're scaring the security guard. So, what is it you wish to ask of me then, hmm? For starters, how'd you get to be so totally whacked? Uh, okay, examine first. I don't think there's gonna be anything new here. Smile for the camera. Guy monitor for this room hasn't moved an inch, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, he hasn't moved an inch. Real pro, which was the previous message, but now, maybe he just doesn't get to see a lot of women like Miss May in here. <laughs> Check mark. Alright, so... Talk? That man. About the man who stayed with you in your hotel room? Can you tell me about him? Where is he? Come on. No way, Jose! Hmm. Maybe if I had something to get her to talk? Yeah, well, we'll deal with that. The wiretap. Why did you place a wiretap on Mia's phone? Aw, when you say it like that, it sounds so cold, so criminal. Uh, tapping people's phones is a crime, Miss May. Oh, and I suppose you learned that in lawyer school, hmm? <laughs> How else could anybody have known this? Creep. This woman is impossible to talk to. Your attitude. Say, why are you so angry? I mean, you don't look like a bad person. Ooh, that does it! Bottom-feeding, scum-sucking lawyer! B bottom I can't tell. Does she have a thing against lawyers, or just against me? Jeez. Okay, so what could I possibly show her? Uh... I don't know what I would show her to get her attitude to change. I mean, I guess this isn't an actual courtroom case, so I can do whatever the hell I want. Oh, hello there, Chief Medipuru. Welcome to the stream. I'll just show her everything. Why the hell not? Oh, but I can't. This is just a court record. So I can't actually show her anything. Okay, that's just check. Okay, oh well then. Marvin Grossberg, Mia's mentor, April May, tap Mia's phone... Bellboy, checked her in. Yeah, I don't know if I really have anything for her at this point, so I Oh no, oh, presents. Okay. There it is. Um... The wire type itself? I don't freaking know. I, I might as well just do everything. Hey, guess what? Actually, I, um, really hate your guts. So get lost. Because, well, I'm not cooperating. Thanks, I noticed. Freaking brutal. I mean, this is easy. I could just go through everything. The game's making this easy for me, right? Well. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna have to move somewhere. Uh... The hotel, I assume. Um, okay, room 303, I'm here. Ah, welcome, sir. Quite the performance today, if I do, or if I dare say so myself. Oh, uh, thanks. He's complimenting me for catching him? Like, what a freaking professional. Sorry for putting you on the spot like that. No, no, not at all, sir. Your efforts today can only help the Gatewater's rep, as they say. Huh? Rep? Yes, our reputation will swell as the hotel where the murderer used the wiretap. What? We can charge a premium for the room, of course. It will be great for business, sir. Whoa, whoa! Miss May hasn't been charged with murder. I, too, will become famous. <laughs> he, just, he just keeps going. The bellboy who brought the murderer iced coffee. <laughs> Why do I feel like we're both stuck in the same bad dream? So, you are our honored guest. Please let me know if there is anything I could bring you. This guy, what a hero. Miss May. About Miss May? Oh, her? Sir, not to boast, but I knew the moment I saw her. She'd do what I said. Do what? I'm starting to think the most suspicious person here is this guy. Jesus. The man. I wanted to ask you about the man who was with Miss May. Ah, yes. He struck me as a real lady killer, if you'll... Jesus. Yeah. If you'll pardon the expression. Oh, I hear you're a real lady kidder, killer. Acquitted. I knew it from the moment I saw him, sir. He and I are of the same ilk. We both carry the scent of... Danger. There we are, in total agreement, Mr. Psycho Bellboy. If you had a photo of that man, I'm quite sure I could identify him. A photo? Huh. Could you tell me about this hotel? Absolutely. And on that subject, I have an excellent idea, sir. Currently, this hotel is known as the Gatewater. I propose that we add a subtitle. A, s a subtitle? The Gatewater Hotel. Murder Manor. 
Dude, that'll, that'll be very good for particular clientele, but overall, I think that'll be a detriment to business. Oh, have a lovely night, Rich Toto. Well, what do you think? Uh, sounds great. Whatever floats your tea set. Alright, so, uh, examine. Huh? There's still a screwdriver stuck in that drawer. Ah, please leave that as it is, sir. That's the Drawer of Terror, hiding place of the murderer's wiretap. It's set to become one of the most popular attractions here. This guy's serious. I don't believe it. A vase, as expected. I'm not good with flower names, except maybe tulips and sunflowers. Ah. Yeah, we've seen this. So we actually do repeat certain things. A bottle and two glasses. Yep, we, we noticed that way before. Why hasn't he cleaned these up by now? Ah, I beg your pardon, sir, but if you could please refrain from touching those. It's part of the decor, and also very important evidence for a crime scene. I... Y y yeah, he brought two glasses, meaning the guy must have been here. Unless the bellboy brought a glass for himself. The last drink before murder. So he was lying in his testimony. Unless Miss May wanted two glasses of iced coffee in wine glasses. We'll be famous, the talk of the hotel industry. That seems important. Nice weather again today. I could see the Fay and Cole offices, of course. Ah, yes, we plan to install a telescope in that window, of course. That that seems like it's skirting on uh, illegal. <laughs> Just five dollars will earn you three minutes of uh, view to a kill. In lowercase, so as not to be uh, sued for infringement. J Just kidding, sir. Oh. <laughs> By that look in his eyes, I'd say he was more than serious. Poor taste. Oh. Simple bed. Recently made. Okay. Now let's run through the present game. No new subjects. What can I show him? The autopsy report. I'm sorry. All I could think about during the trial was the hotel. I wasn't paying much attention to the evidence. My badge isn't evidence, you... I mean, again, this is this is very King's Quest. Like, old Sierra games. Just try everything on everything until something clicks. And we're done. Bye. Um... Faye and Co. This is where I could see about running to the right. Looks like Forensics has taken the day off today. Detective Gumshoe's nowhere in sight. The police really gave this place a working over. I doubt there are any valuable clues left. Suppose you can't have to take a look around, though. No one to talk to. Sky is blue and so am I. Hotel right across the way. Yeah, we've already seen this stuff. Are some of the files missing? Nah, I'm imagining things. Oh-ho! I can't slide? There's, there's no scroll option? Wasn't there an option like that before? Options? No. Back? Move? I, I, like, I really can't slide over anymore? There is a whole thing to examine here, unless this is the only room that's relevant anymore. Guess I'm moving. Huh. Looks like Grossberg is out today. Again. And the painting's gone. Maybe he's avoiding me for some reason? Mahogany desk. Who has been polished? What's this? Old photos? There are two lying here. Hello there, Crypto. Welcome to the stream. Something's been written in pencil on the backs. DL6 Incident Exhibits A and B. Let's take a look at these. A. I'm sure I see this person somewhere. Perhaps I'll borrow this photo. I'm sure no one will miss just one little photo. And it might be a valuable clue. I'll take it for now. Quietly added to the court record. Oh, yeah, well, here's the guy. That's it. Swap. Swap. 
That's actually really scary, though, because that implies that I could go to the court, like, I could go to trial and just be missing a piece of evidence. So this game can actually, uh, really, like, stick it to you later. <clears throat> they don't look like the books have ever been read. I think we're done here except for the very obviously, conspicuously missing painting. Okay. Wait a second. Wasn't there a giant painting hanging on that wall? Yeah, yeah, it was a painting of... Fisherman? Wasn't it? Wasn't a very memorable painting anyhow. Just doesn't matter what I say. <laughs> it was not Grosberg. So are we just not going to talk about the fact that it's missing? Don't worry, it's fine. Well, anyway, now that I have a photo, I can go and show it to... The obvious answer is Miss May, but I'll, I'll do the bellboy first just to see what happens. Take a look at this photo. That's him, detective. Uh, I'm the lawyer. Oh, I know that. I just wanted to say detective once. You know how it is. That That is bizarre. That's really weird. Oh, Neon Wave, if it turns out I'm missing evidence that the game will actually call me on it? Okay, good to know. No, no, I don't. Without a doubt, that is the man who checked in with Miss April May. How about I write an affidavit swearing that that's him? An affidavit? This guy's way too excited about this. Yeah, do it. Well, sure, why not? Yes! I've always wanted to write an affidavit, sir. From henceforth, I think that should be, uh... No, it might actually be two words. If he just said henceforth, but from henceforth. Huh. I will be known as the bellboy who swore the affidavit. Just hurry up and write it. Alright. Not even Miss May can play dumb to this. I wonder what would happen if I did show the photo to anybody else, though. Like, I bet you that other woman matters for something else. Uh, detention center. You again? Can't you take a hint and stay gone? Hey, the only reason I'm back here is because you won't talk to me. Oh, so it's my fault now. You don't just have spiky hair. You also have a spiky heart. She got me. That does it. When this case is done, I'm shaving my head. Uh, spoilers. He will not. Um, okay, so present. Oh yeah, I can show the affidavit itself. But, uh, oh, just for the hell of it. Could you have a look at this? What's that? The bellboy's affidavit. He tells us everything he saw. Such as the man you checked in with. Who was most definitely this guy? So it switches over. <laughs> now I'm getting somewhere. Push her hard. This is it. All or nothing. Time to do a little bluff. No use playing dumb. If indeed that's an act. If you don't talk, I'm taking this info to the press. What? Even though he should have been witness to murder, your little friend was missing. I'm sure the press would have a field day with his reputation. <laughs> Ooh, fine, I'll talk. You, you win, lawyer. Yes. Man, that felt good. This isn't a case where I have a health bar, though, so I get the feeling that either answer would have helped, or worst case scenario, it just says, whoops, I'll try the other thing. It's great to be alive. Why are you pumping your fists in the air? <laughs> That's so bad. Oh, <clears throat> uh, now, tell me about the man you were with. That man, he's my boss. Red, white. Okay, the president of the information gathering conglomerate, Blue Corp. Yeah, I forgot about that. Red? White? Information gathering? Well, I suppose you could call it a detective agency. Hmm. So this is the man that was with you the night of the murder. I'm... I'm scared to talk. I don't want to end up like her. Oh my god. Oh? Uh, it's okay. I'll just ask Mr. White himself. Can you tell me where Blue Core is located? Mr. Red White, at last. Finally, a lead on this guy. If April May couldn't have done it, that leaves him. 
Time to take action. Bellboy's affidavit discarded. Alright. Okay. Now I guess I get to move. Um... Yeah, nothing. Blue Corp. We're doing it! Oh, hey, he's got the painting. So September 7th, CEO's office. What's with the surreal decor? There's a trophy that's just a question mark. Welcome! Please furnish me with the title of your personage. What the... Your name! What's your name? Oh my god. <laughs> I was just inquirably asking the title that you go by. Uh, right. Phoenix Wright. Inquirably? Mr. Wright, is it? Right, I see. Splendiferous! Perhaps I have intimidated you with my giantesque vocabulary? My lexicon? What is this guy's problem? I guess this problem is that he does not deign to condescend to the hoi polloi. I'm Red White, CEO of Blue Corp. You know, corporate expansion official. My business dealings bring me into contact with the elite of the elite. And by the way, that's not what CEO stands for. I believe it's Chief Executive Officer. That's why I paused for a second. I was like, is that right? <laughs> so I'm afraid I am not used to conversing with the wordily challenged. This is so infuriating because this guy is just making up words. He talks like freaking Lewis Carroll. <laughs> Hello there, Barry. Welcome to the stream. What a fruitcake. Hmm, let me guess. You are an attorney fresh out of law school, are you not? That's the only explanation for why you would come to meet me like this. What does he mean by that? No matter. So, what business does a mighty lawyer have with a man such as myself? Yipes. This guy's arrogance meter is off the scale. It really is. I can't wait to look at all his pretentious stuff. God damn, that desk! I was looking at the top half of the screen, I didn't notice what the legs of the desk were. That's crazy! I'm guessing this is supposed to be a desk? My my, this is quite the... thing. It is modeled on my body. Wow, that is next level narcissism. It is modeled on my body, see? Well, does its sleek roundature not inspire you? Whoa! Next level! It's, like, legitimately incredible. This is the top floor of a 20-story building. The view is quite... presidential. This is freaking legendary. Haven't I seen this somewhere? I was right the first time. It was a... I guess a fisherman. Is this a replica? Ridiculosity! I have no interest in anything but originals. That right there is a bona fide original, worth five million for sure. Hmm. Yeah, obviously, he paid Grossberg to get it. A statue of a man holding up the world, which is almost certainly modeled after Mr. White himself. The blue core sign certainly stands out enough. The model for the man is, of course, Mr. White. Truly a work of art, but probably too butatious for you to appreciate, correct? I think it's a little too butatious for just about anyone to appreciate. So many fake words that you don't question because he's your boss. This is infuriating. An impressive lineup of trophies. Oh, thanks! I made them myself! Judge's special runner-up. Best participation? Oh, no! Judge's cooperation award. Special good try prize. Oh, God! Hmm, the words judges and special kind of stand out. Ooh. Uh, okay, so... Miss May. Miss May is an employee of Blue Corps, is she not? Correct. She was my se secretary. <laughs> like, like, like the horse? <laughs> what a shock it was to hear what she has done. What she has done? You mean the wiretap? Indeed. She is paid to answer phones. Tapping them is not in her job description. She does gather information for us as part of her duties. But I assure you, we do not condone illegal methods. It is ineffable that she would do this. Ooh, nice. Sounds like he's trying to turn Miss May into a scapegoat. The night of the murder. On the night of the murder, were you in April May's hotel room? Who can say? I seldom pay attention to mundane details, such as time and place. 
My motto is, don't worry, be happy. Still, Mr. White, the hotel bellboy has stated on the record that he does remember you very clearly. Uh-oh. <laughs> no matter! The bellboy can say what he pleases, I still won't talk to you. If you want me to speak, put me on the witness stand. Although I doubt you'd be capable of doing that. Huh. He raises a good question, actually. Why didn't the prosecution call him as a witness? Yeah, I was kind of wondering that. They grabbed the bellboy right out of work. He should have seen the same thing as April May. Oh ho ho! The police! The courts! To me, they are mere toys, playthings, for my amusement. Blue Corp? What kind of company is Blue Corp anyway? Ah, excellent question! We buy and sell various kinds of information. We are a company of the future. You might say we are the future. Sell information? In just ten years, I've built this business up into the grand office you see now. Ah, in case you were wondering, Blue Corps was named after the color blue. I, Red White of Blue Corps, as founder and CEO, named it so. And why, you ask? Because I like the color blue, of course. Fantabulistic, is it not? I can't even be mad at this guy. Uh, there's something that's been bothering me. Yes, what might that be? That big painting on the wall over there. When did you get it? Say, when did you get that painting? Hmm, no idea. I forgot. Well, it was obviously within the past day or two. I've seen that painting before. Yesterday, in fact. Okay. Why do I find that painting here today? Mr. Wrong, was it? Right. Okay, good, I'm right. So, Mr. Wrong... It appears you do not fully grasp your position here. I ask again, who are you? Um, huh? A lawyer? No, my feeble friend, a mere lawyer. Worth nothing. Zilch. Zippo. Nada. Just like that sorry excuse for an attorney gr grody burger. Wow. W what? Uh. Oof. Ah, uh, uh, he, he punched me. Well, Mr. Lawyer, what will you do, eh? Charge me with assault? Charge away, I welcome it, for it is you who will be found guilty. What? Heed my exposition. The police, the courts, they all do my bidding. So you say. But I wonder, is that kind of control really possible? I don't expect you to understand. It is a world beyond your... Compensation? Was that a malapropism? <laughs> you came here from Grody Burgers, I presume. Mr. Grossbergs, yes. Then you must ask him, why is it that his painting of his hangs here? Perhaps then he will tell you. Perhaps he will explain how a man can live life purely for personal profit. Go now, skedaddle. There is nothing more to discuss. W okay, I was wondering if I could ask the other questions about the painting. Would you be kind enough to seize your inane chattering and vacate the premises? Let me put it in language you are sure to understand. Shut up and get out. I have nothing more to say. I don't think there's going to be anything I could show him. And I know I'm not on the present screen. Nah. Alright, I'm out of here. Yeah, he's back. Huh? I don't think he's noticed me standing here. Maybe I should clear my throat? Uh, <clears throat> Jump, Jehoshaphat! Oh, you! What's wrong? You look so pensive, like an old man at the end of his days. <clears throat> I'm not senile yet. I was just thinking about this whole mess. Something's really bothering him. That much is clear. No, oh, whoops. Momentary setback. 
Oh my god, we're back in business. Today's trial. So you came to see the trial? Yes, yes, I did. Something was bothering me all last night, you see. Couldn't get a wink of sleep. Really? What was that? Well, you see, it's just... Me a sister, that poor girl. My boy, I owe you my thanks, truly. I don't know what I would have done if things had gone poorly for the girl. Your refusal? I asked before, but why did you refuse a request for defense? I think I have a right to know. Oh, I, oh I'm saying, I think I have a right to know. Oh, right, Mr. Wright? No, no, I'm sorry. It's just, I need more time to think about it, my boy. He does seem troubled about something. I'm starting to have a feeling I know what it is. So, I paid Blue Corp a visit. Oh, oh, I see. Mr. Grossberg, I have to admit something has been bothering me. Oh, what is it? Well, out with it, my boy. You see, it's just that big painting. Mr. Grossberg, sir. Ah, for God's sake. All right, I'm keeping this unplugged. There we go. There was a giant painting hanging right there the other day, was there not? The one you said you had no intention of parting with? Well, I saw it. Today. It was in the CEO's office at Blue Court, Red White's office. So, you noticed. I suppose I should have guessed you would. It is a large painting. Mr. Grossberg, I know you and Mr. White are connected somehow. C connected you say? Yes, and I know what it is. He's blackmailing you. Mr. White has something on you, doesn't he? Blackmail? Ugh. I think that painting is fairly gaudy proof. Very well, this may be the chance I've been waiting for. Maybe it's time to get this off my chest so I can finally rest easy again. After all, you were Mia's understudy. Perhaps it was fate. What's he talking about? Red White is a man who makes his living through intimidation. Blue Corps is a company that excels in finding people's weaknesses, I'm afraid. I've been paying them for 15 years now. 15 years? All because of the DL6 incident, as you may have guessed. The name on the back of those photographs. As you suspected, I could not stand in defense of Maya because of this. White would have destroyed me if I did. So that's the connection. It is hard for me to tell you this, my boy. But arresting Red White will be nigh on impossible. Impossible? Why? He has information on everyone. It gives him an iron grip. He owns judges, attorneys, prosecutors, police, and politicians. What? They are bound, unable to do harm to themselves and therefore to him. Don't look at me like that. What you see is nothing more than the weight of many years. I'm actually 20. So the DL6 incident. What is the DL6 incident? DL6 is nothing more than the sorting code the police gave the case. It was 15 years ago now. I received a request from a medium, a spirit medium. A medium? Her name was Misty Faye. Faye? Indeed, she was Mia's mother. She had been investigating a murder at the bequest of the police. Is bequest the right word? It'd be, it'd be the request. A bequest is like what you bequeath to like your next of kin. <laughs> And she failed. As a result, the police called her a fraud. Well, this is what Maya was talking about the other day. I did all I could for her, and in the end, cleared her of wrongdoing. That murder case, however, remains unsolved to this day. That case is the DL6 incident. Blackmail. But why were you blackmailed over this, Mr. Grossberg? The DL6 incident was top secret at the time. It made sense. The police didn't want people to know they were using a medium. They couldn't let people know. But one person found out. I... I told him. You told White? He offered me riches. It is an embarrassment to me now. Because I talked, the police were mocked far and wide. In secret, they began looking for the one who sold them out. Of course, White heard about it, and he came to me. Only this time, the offer was blackmail. I see. White controls the law of this country as he sees fit. Yet, if you would still challenge him... Have a close look at Mia's office. Mia's office? She followed his every move for years. She may have recorded something of what she found. Okay. It's funny. Looking at this room, it seems so normal. Hard to imagine a murder took place here. Mr. Grossberg said there'd be clues. Maybe I should have another look. So the files, I'm sure. 
All the cases, da -da 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 -da, we'll take a look. Which file should I look at? Ada I. Let's see if there's any files in Ada catches my eye. That's terrible. Misty Faye, that's Mia and Maya's mother. Huh, should I take a look? Yeah. I have tarnished the Faye name, leaving only these words, my mother vanished. I was determined to find the ones who had made my mother blame herself in this way. Using the power that it runs with my family, I held an audience with the dead. Finally, the names of two men surfaced. One was Marvin Grossberg, a lawyer who sold my mother's information for riches. The other was the man who sold that information to the press. This parasite who makes his fortune on threats and coercion. His name is... Huh. The record stops there. So Mia knew Grossberg. Yeah, let's see if there's a record that catches my eye. Freaking terrible. So it's just the misty, you know, leave it be. Alright, let's just go through all these. J through S, nothing much. Maybe I'll skim. <sighs> well, no harm in flipping through a bit, I guess. The biggest part here is in the S, suicide. Ew. She's a collection of suicide reports. There's politicians, policemen. Oh! There's writing on most of these in pencil. White? This is Mia's handwriting. Wait, I get it. Mia thought he was involved in these suicides. White drove them all to... I can use these newspaper clippings. Huh. Let's find the most disturbing one. Just about a politician. Okay. And I'm done. So I guess we can't check the Z. Alright. So what do I do now? Do I go back? Grossberg? I don't know if this will help. I found this in Mia's files. So she was investigating Red White, as I suspected. Expected. Well, if you wanted to challenge him, you could present this in court. Not a bad idea. Alright. Did it. Like, are, are we good? Eh? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm way slow on, on catching this, but yeah, when, when they said at the, uh, the police's bequest, and I was like, request? Dragon Ace, you mentioned behest. That also makes a lot of sense. Apparently, Miss May is in questioning. I doubt they'll let me talk to her today. Okay. Well, aren't you the persistent? Or aren't you persistent? Sorry, but there's something I have to ask you. Mr. Lawyer, I really hate having to repeat myself. But it seems the message has not yet penetrated your thick skull. Stop bothering me. If you try my patience further, I fear a nasty accident may occur. Do I make myself clear? Transparent. This is the only clue that Mia left me. I better make this one count. Mr. White, see this? It's an article describing the suicide of a politician. He was embezzling secret government funds. Then, one day, word got leaked to the press. The very next day, he took his own life. And this concerns me how? I found this article in Mia's office. Miss Mia. She had a file filled with articles like this. Every one of them was labeled with a single word. White. Uh. Mr. White, I know what you did to this politician. You were blackmailing him. Blackmail? Not just him, either. You were threatening and coercing hundreds of others. You were involved in all the suicide cases that Mia investigated. This company is built on blackmail. I'm right, aren't I? What a bizarre accusation! Mr. Wrong, what is it that you should be doing now? Investigating me? No, 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 I think not. You should be searching for the one who killed Miss Mia! Interphone? Secretary's office, hello? Mr. Wrong will be leaving now. Yes, sir. I'll send someone right away. Wait a second, Mr. White. You're right. You are absolutely right. I should be looking for the killer now. And actually, I've done better. I found him! He's sitting right in front of me. Just what are you insinuating? He's not even using the... the fantabulous words anymore. <laughs> Mia was onto you. She was keeping tabs. For this reason, you had April May tapping her phone. Then, Mia was murdered, and all the documents about you mysteriously disappeared. So, 
the culprit would be... Even a child could work it out, Mr. White. You did it! Secretary's office. We won't be needing an escort for Mr. Wrong. Instead, please connect me to the public prosecutor's office. Of course, sir. One moment, please. White? Oh, White? That you? What are you doing calling me at a time like this? Hello, Chief Prosecutor. I've changed my mind. I want to testify tomorrow. What's this about? The Mia Fey case. I witnessed the murder, you see. And thus, as a very important witness, I would like to testify. What? Why now? I thought you said you didn't want to go to court. Quietude, I told you I changed my mind, didn't I? Oh, and one other thing. Send the police over here right away. The man is standing right in front of me. He looks dazed, but could be violent. Yeah, like, th this really is inane. Like, Phoenix Wright should have said this in court. What? What man? Are you even listening? The executioner, the hatchet man, the liquidator, the killer man! What? Mr. White, this isn't another one of those. Chief Prosecutor, I do not believe you are in a position to freely offer your opinions to me, correct? I'm telling you to send the police, now. Did I not tell you, Mr. Wrong? You are a mere lawyer, as was Miss Mia. How dare you! I'll point the finger at you, and you will be tried as Miss Mia's killer. The case is as good as settled. No lawyer of any worth will defend you. I have friends in the local lawyers association, you see. You'll be given a lawyer so stupendously inept that they make even you look competent. I... I feel faint. Detective Gumshoe reporting, sir. Ah! Butts! Harry Butts! <laughs> We're still going with that. Right, actually. Phoenix Wright, and my friend's name is Larry. Oh, right. Sorry, pal. Butts was that murderer, right? Ugh. Detective Gumshoe, I present to you the man who killed Miss Mia Fey. What? Take this despicable human being into custody. Farewell, Mr. Wrong. Oh, this sucks. September 8th, 3.37 p.m., detention center. Visitor's room. I can't believe it's only been a day since the first trial. My trial begins tomorrow. White's going to set a trap for me. And the prosecution will be in on it, of course, Edgeworth included. An attorney was assigned to me by the state yesterday. I refused. I had an idea. Right! Mr. Wright! Oh, Maya. Great, they let you out of detention. Just now, yes. It's all thanks to you. Huh, now I'm afraid we've switched places. What? You mean you... I explained what had happened to Maya. I don't believe it. How many people does that man need to destroy before he's satisfied? My mother, my sister, and now you. This has gone too far. Mr. Wright, please tell me, is there anything I can do? Uh, well... All right, you can be my defense lawyer tomorrow. All right. Huh? Leave it to me. I am Mia's sister after all. Lawyership runs in our blood. Wasn't it ghost powers that ran in your blood? I'd better run to the bookstore and pick up a copy of Law for Rookies. Oh no. Wait, 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 wait! What, what, what? I'm kidding, it was a joke. No way. N no, really, I, I was kidding, but thanks. It's good to know you're on my side. And there really isn't anything you can do for me anyway. But, but I can't just sit here and do nothing. I've got to give that nan a piece of my mind. Just a piece? Okay. Then come to the trial tomorrow. O okay, I'll be there. I'll show them a thing or two. Times may change, yet with crime it's the same old story. In fact, it's gotten worse. Lengthy court proceedings are no longer realistic. Beginning a few years ago, a limit of three days was put on initial court trials. 
Almost all finish in a day. Most with a guilty verdict. I never thought I would end up in the defendant's chair myself for this case. <laughs> with the true culprit appearing as the star witness. This is it. Tomorrow it's me or him. Oh boy. Oh, okay, and now it's to be continued. Well, there's the perfect timing anyway. Saving content! Hooray! There we go! I made it to the end of this uh, section of the chapter, so this is where I'm going to stop the stream. So thank you very much for joining the stream, and have a wonderful night.